is from Lim Wim. Hello, I'm quickly going to share my screen. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Hi, my name is Lynn. Um, I will be presenting um, well, my paper. Um, the title of the paper is Modeling an Extension of Safety Culture Within an Organization Using an AI Coach, and um, specifically reducing the risk of postpartum depression by incorporating communication with parents during childbirth. Um, before I start, this is in combination with um, the Safe Coach project here in the Netherlands, and um, I essentially created models um, to aid with that project. Um, to introduce, I'm going to be talking about three main topics. So why the father's role and a father's perspective and desires. Um, the big why is uh, childbirth is a, is a complicated process and in return it has effects on the parents involved. Maternal postpartum depression is um, one of the greatest mental health issues that women face after giving birth. There's actually a 13% likelihood that a woman will suffer from this after birth. Um, but similarly, and sadly not so well known, paternal postpartum depression um, can equally happen. And actually the biggest um, influence on whether a father develops paternal postpartum depression, and I will be referring to those terms in PPPD and MPPPD, um, is for fathers to the most common predictor for fathers to develop postpartum depression is, is the mothers actually having postpartum depression. And then last but not least, having parents who are not mentally stable obviously has a huge effect on the child and their ability to um, evolve and also on their mental health later on down the line. But that's just a general overview. I'm not going to be talking, um, touching on the child so much because the paper focuses primarily on how to help the father. Um, and this is because of the father's roles, essentially. Um, in a lot of research, uh, mothers have stated that the, the father is their number one supporter, uh, mentally, physically, and technically in all aspects after having given birth. Uh, moreover, fathers are the first person who can see signs of change in the mother. So having their mental health be at the best or as best as it can be, is crucial for both parents to stay healthy. And then last but not least, the fathers are always um, typically put into the role of a of financial support and the provider of the family. And the reason why I'm touching on specifically fathers here is because a study has been done by Myers at Al, um, where essentially they interviewed different fathers after the process. and. These were just some of the most prominent quotes that fathers um, had said that I just wanted to have to have you take a quick look at. Um, I mean, I think the first one says it all. I read the information my wife was given. It All these quotes essentially um, depict that the father is completely left out and his role is not taken into account enough during the whole process. So, um, I use network-oriented modeling um, to create models, and essentially my goal was to, uh, hospitals are have protocols in place, they have steps for everything in place, and I want to bring the importance to adding a possible protocol, a possible step, um, possible education for healthcare practitioners um, in order to also help the father and then in return have a positive influence on the mother and the child after childbirth. Um, so first I will be touching on the decisions I made for the model itself. Then I have four cases that I will be presenting. So the first one in, um, is a case where the healthcare practitioner has a mental model. Um, so essentially a thought track of, of communicating with the father. The second one includes this, but also an AI coach that then intervenes when there's not enough, when the healthcare practitioner doesn't act. And this intervention is time-based in, in the second case. 
In the third case, um, the AI coach monitors the world states essentially. And then if he, it sees um, that a world state is not activated enough that the healthcare practitioner um, missed a step, it will step in and will the, do the action in place of the health, healthcare practitioner. And the last case is um, organizational learning, um, moving towards safety culture where the AI, AI coach learns from an expert in the field and then passes that on and uses the monitor formula um, to then monitor the world states and intervene. So decisions that were made based on the literature. Uh, there's a few factors which result in, in women developing maternal postpartum oppression. Um, these are all the ones that are considered are also um, present in the model. So a woman being multiparous versus nulliparous. Multiparous means that the woman has had a child before, one or more. And um, contrary to what, what someone might believe that someone with experience um, is less likely to develop maternal postpartum depression, actually a woman being multiparous um, has a uh, a higher likelihood of the mother than developing postpartum depression due to the additional stress at home. Similarly to really any type of deviation from the original birth plan, from the mother's desires in the sense that if she wanted a natural birth, but for her health purposes, she was advised to do a cesarean section after something like that. Even if she agrees to it, it still can result in negative um, mental health consequences. When there's no epidural administered and um, the most uh, shocking, honestly, to me when I did the research was that uh, if a woman gives birth to an underweight child, she's four to 18 times more likely to develop maternal postpartum depression. And then similarly to um, MPPD, um, there's obviously higher risk for developing, developing paternal postpartum depression. And these were the decisions and also the um, facts included into the model. Um, as I said before, the number one predictor is maternal postpartum depression, so that has a great effect. Um, same with deviation from original birth plan. And then what uh, the paper essentially wants to include, the lack of support, lack of communication, and lack of knowledge. Um, this is the base model. Um, in the, I'm going to start with the blue oval. That is the mental model of the healthcare practitioner. And it's essentially that the healthcare practitioner, the steps that the healthcare practitioner goes through in their head. And then the end state of that has a direct effect on the world states, um, on the physical states that happen in the room, in the delivery room. Then um, there's different colors and I'll explain those now. So the emotion states are the red ones. The, can, can you see my mouse? I don't know, I, I'll just point like this. Uh, the emotion states are the red ones. Then there is the, the process states, which are the yellow ones. So these are the general, that's the process that happens in very simplified terms. Um, we have the paternal states, so this is what the father is going through actively. Um, then we also have the context states right here. This color, uh, the bottom ones, in case you can't see my cursor. And then also the uh, the communication action stage states, which are the ones in the center, like communication support, support healthcare practitioner, pre-birth info, all of those. Now I'm going to go to the first case. Oh no. Okay, no, I'm still in. Um, which is the healthcare practitioner mental model. And um, you see two levels here essentially. And the red states on the red level um, determine the weight of the connection within the mental model of the healthcare practitioner. And I will show you the effect of that now. So here is a simulation of this. Um, um, of this case. In, uh, on the left side, we have the best case. On the right side, we have the worst case. So in the best case, the healthcare practitioner has a perfect mental model, meaning all steps occur within their mind and then also are translated effectively into the real world. Um, just for a quick um, piece of information, because I am focusing on paternal postpartum depression, I did um, decide to put all the conditions essentially for the mother developing PPD um, as low as possible, 
just to see, just to focus on the father's um, aspect, essentially, but you will still see a change within the maternal postpartum depression risk. So in the best case, the healthcare practitioner does everything correct. And um, this is essentially where the healthcare practitioner sets in. And as you can see, up until then, um, the, the risk, these are all in terms of the risk of something, um, of PPPD and MP child development increases. And as soon as the healthcare practitioner steps in with the right communication, the right support, it immediately decreases and in return also has an effect on MPPD. In the worst case, this mental model doesn't exist. There is um, no indication that they should ever communicate with the father. And well, the effects are quite obvious. It stays very high um, and there's really no sign of it. It A little bit after the fear subsides, it goes down, but then um, it seems to be carrying on in a straight line at around 0 0.9, so at a very high level. And I'm going to go to the next slide. So the second case is where the AI coach intervenes. And um, in this case, for the for the base model, what um, I did is I duplicated the mental model of the healthcare practitioner for the AI coach to have this mental model. And same with the, the red states and the red, um, um, red level. Um, they, those were also duplicated for the AI coach. And then additionally, um, there was also um, some more green states added. Those are the H states and those determine the activation. And um, like I said already, they were um, activated through time in this specific case. So in this simulation, you can see how that affects it. Uh, this simulation was done so that also the healthcare practitioner does not act. And as you can see on the little square where it says intervenes, that is when the AI coach steps in to take over the role of the healthcare practitioner at a specific time point. And similarly to the best case that you saw earlier, um, the results of that is that PPPD decrease in P-child development as well as MPPPD. The third case is the one that is closest, uh, closer to being applicable in practice, which is that the AI coach monitors, given that an AI coach just simply intervening could possibly have adverse effects on the communication that might be happening because it is only time dependent, the intervention. In this case, the AI coach monitors the world states and you can see those by all those added states in the middle um, because they connect to the world states, they take in the information and they see whether there's enough ac activation of the communication states. and then. If there isn't enough because the healthcare practitioner hasn't stepped in, the AI coach will take over those roles in order to ensure that the parents and the child flourish on in life afterwards. Um, here you can see the simulation of that. As you can see, obviously there is a little bit of a longer, um, a longer curve, uh, yet it still has the decreasing trend. That is given the fact that the AI coach first has to make the judgment and cannot step in, in immediately. Um, but in the end, it still has the same effect, just with a little bit of a extended. Then um, we have the fourth case. And this case is um, you have on the very left side, on the red level, you have the... Um, an expert teaching the AI, which you'll see in the simulation happens right at the beginning with the intent that the AI goes into a process like that with full knowledge, the AI coach. Um, you have, except for that, most of the, the red level states are equal. And then you have the, the feedback and the feed forward, where in the end, the goal is for the healthcare practitioner then to learn from from the experience and do better next time, essentially. Oh, there you go. So here you have the simulation for that, for the feed forward. That is when the AI coach learns and it has all the information. It's a line that goes up immediately at the beginning for the AI coach to be able to act when it has to. 
You also see, similarly to the example before, that there is um, there is an increasing trend because I don't think I've mentioned this. The idea is not uh, fear and those emotions. The idea is not to erase emotions from humans because those are natural and fear and those emotions come up so that so the risk naturally increases. But if the right amount of support and communication is there, then there is a chance for it to the risk for the risk to be lowered significantly. So essentially. Um, you have the upward trend again, and then um, the downward trend um, starts. And at that point, is the AI coach has intervened already, he's, he's helped already, but then the feedback gets activated. And that is essentially where the healthcare practitioner then learns from the experience and also applies it, which is why there's um, a cluster of so many lines there because that is the learning process of, of taking in the information. So um, some limitations. Um, so the modeling learning during the process, this is sort of what happens in this example in the simulation I just showed. It is uh, the learning happens during the process whereas um, the learning should happen after and then further work could really um, play more on the interaction between the healthcare practitioner and the AI coach during childbirth so that it is not one or the other but it is a combination of both and this obviously um, I wrote down pressing a button so for example that the healthcare practitioner then activates because I mean we all know that uh, the healthcare industry and the workers within it are under incredible time pressure. They're always out of time. They always have something to do. So just an activation where that um, could just be a help for the healthcare practitioner instead of a nuisance. In summary, um, I wanted to just highlight the importance of mental models of healthcare practitioners and having the mental model for a communication action because as you can see, the effects were um, were immediate. They were um, exactly what, what we wanted, essentially, because um, by implementing those few communication actions that we all possess, um, it can have a big effect on, on the family afterwards, because the childbirth giving process doesn't just stop once the child is born. Then I um, showed you an example of an AI coach intervening during childbirth, and then also an AI coach monitoring the world states and intervening if necessary. And then last but not least, there was the last simulation where the AI coach learns the perfect knowledge from an expert, and then the healthcare practitioner learns from the AI coach after the childbirth process. So in conclusion, knowing the stressors is incredibly important. Uh, you can tackle post paternal postpartum depression by tackling maternal postpartum depression and also vice versa, given that when both are mentally um, healthy to some extent, um, they can they can be each other's support. And that is like like I said earlier, they are each other's number one support, and that is really crucial. And then also preventative measures measures are simply adequate support, adequate communication, and acknowledging the father in the room. Yes. Thank you. Are there any questions? Hi, I have a question for you, Sati. Hi. Hi. Um, so what is the... I guess, status of the project? I mean, is this an ongoing implementation you have or? This is an ongoing project. So um, I wrote this paper in as, as my thesis. Um, and I it's just a small model out of the many models that need to be implemented. They want to, it's, it's called the Safe Coach um, Project. And it's in um, in the Netherlands, and they want to implement it, hopefully, an AI coach into a hospital setting. But for that to even be feasible, the AI coach has to have sufficient knowledge to um, be helpful rather than, um, or be accepted in general, because um, people tend to, um, I guess, in some ways, be a little close-minded to having 
um, a computer tell you what's right and what's not right. So um, it's part of a bigger project. Okay, cool, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody has another question? Oh, thank you, Lynn. Thank you so much.